This is KTN News. Welcome back. You're watching Morning Express. We're talking about the biggest headlines this morning. They are, it's all political, as is uh, as you would expect. So this morning, the Standard Cell is asking a router front runner or 2022 pay setter. And the front page of the Daily Nation is telling us that um, uh, the Uhuru and Raila are pro plotting a NARC like coalition. Faced with the formidable channel of the deputy challenge of the deputy president, William Ruto, United um, Democratic Alliance. Um, um, strategic strategies for the president and ODM leader have drawn inspiration from the victorious pre-election pact of 20, 2002 and crafted three options for nominations to secure majority seats at all levels. The question is, can you replicate that moment that happened in 20, uh, 2002? Professor Menya, what do you think of this uh, plan? No, thank you, Trix. Mm. Um, Definitely, uh, um, the country is going to be ruled by one coalition yeah. or another. Yeah. But uh, I don't think that coalition will even be the, the shadow of NAC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because I think um, uh, basically what was happening in NAC's time was that the entire country was, uh, you know, was rallied mm. in the same direction. Um, willingly the that, so. Uh, and willingly so. Yeah. Uh, I myself was out of the country. I came, I was identifying myself at the airport with a voter's card. Mm -hmm. We used to have the physical voter's card. Yes, then. yes. Um, and, and, and people, the mood in the air was a mood for change. Mm. Uh, people were tired of Moi. Uh, they felt that, uh, uh, and it wasn't a group, it was the entire nation. We had civil society pulling in the same direction. We had the churches pulling in the same direction. The ordinary Monanchi was pulling in the same direction. Uh, it was the, our Kenya, yes, we can moment. Mm. We, in fact, yes, we, we absolutely. We were singing uh, Yote Awezekana, Bila Moi, yeah. <laughs> and so many other things. Mm. And then these guys um, just became, they became the face of the coalition, mm -hmm. more than the coalition per se. Mm -hmm. they, they became the face of the coalition and they enabled this moment to, to actually happen, mm -hmm. you know, by the politicians, by, by bringing the parties together and, you know, and, and, and running apart from Kanu that was basically left, left, left on the outside. Um, but why do I say that, that uh, you know, the, we, we are still go, going to be governed by a coalition? Um, it's likely because, uh, as you can see, there's a lot more fragmentation. Mm. The political class are, are, are actually spending a lot of time creating vehicles yes. that, you know, that they would use to negotiate and so on. This will be a very total, a totally different type of coalition. It will not be a coalition that is, uh, you know, that is uh, buoyed by the support of the people. Mm -hmm. It will be a coalition uh, amongst different political parties that are, that are, that are more or less ne negotiating for power. Uh -huh. And you can even see in the, in the analysis there, the issue is not, um, the issues that are being put or reconciled on the table and so on. Uh, the, it is really just, uh, you know, uh, this guy has an outfit, uh, Lee has his outfit there, yeah. uh, Munya has his outfit, mm -hmm. uh, King has his outfit. In fact, I think every single politician in Kenya actually as a political party yes. <laughs> with a view yes. to, you know, to actually uh, using, using that to negotiate. L last, last of this point is, uh, is also the people in the race. Mm -hmm. The people in the race have been in government uh, uh, during NAC's time, post NAC, pre NAC, and, uh, and um, uh, we, we generally know them. Uh, we also know that there's no issue that they're pushing for. <laughs> they're promising ev everybody everything. Yes. If you want 15 wives, we'll uh, Raila will come and tell you that the government will give you 20 and pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Ruto will come and deliver Wilbur. So I, I, I think there's no new narrative. Mm -hmm. there's no, the messaging. No new, the, the messaging is very weak. Yeah. Uh, nobody is, is, uh, is uh, putting on the table um, a governance structure that will deal with the, with the fundamental issues that Kenya is having. Mm -hmm. um, both candidates are just out to get votes, right. not necessarily to develop this new vision mm -hmm. uh, for the country. Occasionally, Raila mentions a third revolution, mm -hmm. uh, but just like I was saying before, um, how do you have a revolution without revolutionaries? Yeah. <laughs> now we don't have revolutionaries, mm -hmm. so you might as well just forget about the revolution. Yeah, it's 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 uh, very difficult to manufacture a revolution <laughs> exactly. or even a moment akin to what exactly. was happening in two thousand and eight. I'd like Mr. Manyasi to come in on this. 
do you think we can replicate what happened then, even with the messaging, we, as he has juxtaposed with the situation in the United States, we have the yes we can messaging, and even Kenyans at that time were ranked some of the most hopeful human beings on earth because of what we were hoping to get. But right now we are dealing with a very disillusioned electorate. Do you think um, they can galvan gal galvanize the electorate in the same manner they did, whatever coalition comes up? Yeah, Trix, uh, you need to remember that, um, yes, forming a, a similar coalition or galvanizing uh, is, is a very high possibility. Mm. The only difference is that in uh, 2002, um, the Kenyatta presidency or, I mean, the Kenyatta candidature was much weaker um, than if you were to make a direct comparison with the William Ruto candidature today. So that's one. So that makes it different in that in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, at that time, it was uh, the country united against Moy, oh. um, which at this point is not exactly the same scenario. Uh, and so therefore, uh, the coalition that comes up, yes, can form a very strong coalition, uh, but it has to come with a lot of strategies then that will upset the William Ruto uh, standpoint. Of course, the weaknesses that uh, the William Ruto uh, camp has is the imagination that you can say that uh, we don't care about seats, we don't care about political, I mean, about um, uh, other tribal leaders, that we don't care about any other person. We are just forming a government uh, which is um, headed by one person. Uh, which is then going to deliver to all Kenyans. Um, that assumption also assumes that come uh, the general election, that tribe will not matter, uh, that things around uh, land will not matter, that like, uh, for example, what Ray Laudinga was doing, that the emotions uh, around people moving around their own people do not matter. Uh, remember, one of the things that uh, the DP's companies to remember is that every time they say uh, they, they, they demonize uh, another person on the other side, uh, they harden the stance of the supporters of that person. Yes. And so if the people who are aggrieved by the statements that have always been thrown, um, referring to them as um, individuals who are hungry for power, surrounding them, I mean, uh, uh, referring to them as people who are only coming together for interest. Remember, if you consolidate all those people and consolidate their support base, um, then um, if you include their sympathizers, and then on top of that, add um, a, a strategy then that yeah. speaks to something different from what William Ruto has been speaking to, mm -hmm. and then you will start seeing competition. Yeah. And so why, that's why initially I said that um, 10 months into the election, um, it was, it's going to, I like the headline about front runner or uh, pace setter because ultimately uh, William Ruto either will become uh, the real front runner to the end, or he will actually become the pace setter, depending on how he continues his messaging, um, and depending on how the other groups, come if they down. come together, especially, then will message. Uh, what I see, especially, and, and, and what I, I, I foresee, is that uh, the William Ruto camp might actually start changing tune mm -hmm. and start negotiating and start talking to others. Um, if that doesn't happen, then you will see a very competitive road right ahead. Okay. Ms. Wamai, what do you think the prospects are if uh, this NAC like coalition is formed? Is this the way to go? Yes, I think it's very necessary at this point because uh, we realize that there are so many uh, interests at the top seats. Mm. And at this point, uh, there's, there have been a uh, a really, a really serious gap where some people have uh, started campaigning early and hence the ground has already formed a, a certain opinion and for that to be uh, to be put aside and for them to be able to take and grab the positions even and control county all levels of government from the county levels to the national levels I think uh, coalition government is quite important right it is um, it's quite timely and mostly because there are prospects of expanding the executive, which was uh, pegged in the BBI, the dotted uh, BBI. 
And I think this is, for them to get these positions, they have to pull together their strengths mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, to pull together and bring together their strengths and to be able to get as many positions as possible. Because you realize if, if they have to go the parliamentary way, and for instance, for the prime minister, the proposal was that the parliament uh, will come from the parliamentary, uh, from the parliamentary system. So for that to happen, they must have majority of the MPs in the, the, the majority MPs in the, in the parliament for them to pass the things that were in the BBI. And we know that the, uh, the proposals in the BBI will be followed by the next person, and especially if the Right Honorable Raya Odinga forms the coalition with the Jubilee government, that will be top of the agenda. So it is very necessary, and also first, uh, secondly, to, to eliminate the sibling fights. Mm. The fights that we see, people feeling that they are left out, and that causes uh, the post the post election violence. So I feel this is a way to expand the house and accommodate more leaders and accommodate more people. And we know the importance of parties. So if instead of fronting so many candidates and dividing the votes and leaving one person to uh, leverage on the whole uh, the voter demographic, it is really necessary to organize themselves. For an, uh, for an expanded uh, government come 2022. And the only way to do it is to put everybody on board. And it is only possible if they, they do the, the coalitions, but I don't really think it is uh, a reflection of what NAP did uh, during the Moise, uh, when trying to do away with the Moise regime. Because at this point, our president, the president, Uru Kenyasa, has been very democratic. Mm. He's uh, ready to leave and exit his position in 2022. So this is not, uh, this is not really like um, a revolution against the regime, but it is more like a moving forward to achieve the things that have already been started the agenda that was already being propelled with the Building Bridges Initiative. And uh, that will make sure that we include everybody. Because lack of inclusion has resulted to people feeling unfit and people feeling really, uh, you know, dishonored and yeah. later caused problems in 20, uh, immediately after election. So this is one thing of, this is one way of harnessing our unity and Kwazimio uh, Laumoja, as the Right Honorable Raila Odinga is, uh, you know, uh, pushing and is uh, championing, the only way to achieve unity is to make everybody involved, is to make everyone feel they're part of uh, the government and they, their voice is heard. And the political parties definitely, these are negotiation vehicles because uh, there's so many parties and the liberty to... Uh, to belong in either of them will ensure that uh, will have have ensured that the votes are distributed across board. So if you come to the central region, you'll find parties like PNU, you'll find Jubilee Party, yes. you'll find other parties that really have members, and these members are still voters, mm -hmm. and there will be candidates in the same same parties. So if that if one party right now, I don't think there is people have the ground have really shifted. And people are so enlightened and they have they under, now understand the liberty and moving with individuals. For instance, there was this um, by-election at, at uh, Machakos, somewhere at Ngo. I, 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 don't, I, I don't really remember the name, but an independent candidate won over the UDA candidates and the WIPA candidates. This shows you that people are now with four ideologies. And if parties do not strengthen and come together and harness their energies, right. we will find so many independent candidates taking over. And that means you cannot be able to pass uh, uh, and to make to, to law the things that you want to uh, to push in the next government. So this coalition is mostly, number one, to, to eliminate fights and also to make uh, everybody feel included, and thirdly, to be able to push the agendas that were stated in the Building Bridges Initiative, but were thwarted uh, during that process. Mm -hmm. So that is the only way to go if we have to 
you know, if we have to really put all these things into perspective. perspective. Right. right. Uh, Professor, she brings in a very important issue of feeling included. That is very important for many of these smaller parties. Do you think that will be the key when they are putting together this coalition and bringing them together so that they can forge ahead towards 2022? Is that a com component that's being ignored by the other coalitions or parties? Yes, I think this is very interesting, and uh, and um, um, yeah, the idea of inclusion really should be.